Happy New Year channel. Heading home. It's been a day. Long day. Did some demolition. Uh, we used these kind of electric jackhammers that were rigged to kind of hammer at an angle to take off tile, basically. Except we weren't taking off tile. We were removing the wood flooring panels from like an old basketball court, like an old 60s, 70s style wood paneling like they used to have on the basketball courts. It's uh, not coming up very easy. It's very dirty work. And I'm seriously thinking to myself, it's about time I cut my hair again. I don't know if I have any videos up on this channel what I look like with the Nordic undercut cleaned up on the sides a little bit on top to style a little bit, have fun with. Uh, I think that's the move. My hair is just, like thinning out, like I'm losing an alarming amount of hair recently. Something's very wrong, I don't know. It's not like creating patches, it's just thinning out all like entire follicles are just pulling out, I don't know. And it's breaking real easy, it gets it's, it's not happy. So I guess I'll just have to start from scratch. Whatever. I gotta figure out something in my diet too. I keep, I keep getting pushed into situations where people at my house and coworkers want to eat like trash and they kind of just pressure me into going along with it. I mean, last night's dinner was amazing. We had a stew. It was pretty insanely good, but generally speaking, just too much fucking junk food and baked garbage. It just, it's got to come to an end. Uh, you know, I, I need to, I'm getting fat and I'm fucking tired of it and so I'm gonna have to just start being a dick, I guess, and putting my foot down and just, you know, no, I'm not gonna eat like that. I'm gonna eat like how I'm gonna eat. And you can eat whatever you want. And if you don't make me something that fits within the confines of what I'm eating and how I want to eat, I just won't eat it. That's what I need to do. Um, I don't wanna be a dick. It's just sometimes that just feels like what it takes because people don't listen so good. Especially my coworkers. Like, God, dude, we went to like some kind of bodega today and it's like, heavily sauced meat and like white rice out the ass of beans and I just I can't eat like that dude that's it's not what you eat and work construction because now you're weighed down for the rest of the day it's it's, it's crap it's no good so I, I gotta I gotta do something different break away and just do what I want to do and just I just need to do what I want to do like I just it, it needs to be more about me you know being stoic and sacrificing for others is important and all that I'm not saying it isn't I have people in my life that I'm glad to do that for but the yield is pretty low payout so I don't know I need to I need to get right because if I'm not right then I can't help other people and I can't be good for other people and I can't I can't be desirable to other people and I can't be inspired inspirational to other people so I, I guess we got to just push things back over to it being the slothy show again I just don't know how the fuck I'm gonna go to bed when I want to go to bed because that's I don't fucking sleep alone and that's a real goddamn problem fucking tired of this 10 30 11 shit anyways uh rant over um just wanted to besides the rant which i do that a lot just dive into tangents left and right that's just how i roll i guess i wanted to talk a little bit about a lot of the black pilling i see uh, on social media i watch a lot of videos from like the so-called intellectual dark web uh, I absorb a lot of content from the manosphere, both from male and female creators. And there's a lot of blackpilling, like just, you know, let's just give up and go our own separate ways, or we should just lower our expectations. I watched the most retarded video today about, oh, prostitution should be legal. This is a married Christian woman, you know, advocating for this because, you know, it gives men the power. I'm like, look, dude, men have the power because men are men. We don't need to legalize prostitution to have power again in our, in our lives and in relationships. If women are taking you for a ride and spending your money and you're not getting anything out of it, that's on you. You need to get some resolve and stop being a lazy consumer and just stand up against businesses that treat you like shit, you know? You did it with the boycotts this last year with uh, Target and Bud Light and it worked out pretty good, you know? They, they, they started seeing sense. Well, that's what you gotta do with women. You gotta get a little strength and you gotta just like, I don't know, I guess you're gonna have to go beat off or something so you can, you know, not have to rely on them for your, your feel goods feel good times um women are taking you for a ride it's, it's not their fault it's your fault you're the man you have all the power yes women control access to sex but you control the access to the relationship you built what you bring to the table is the table itself you built the table right you 
keep the lights on. You patch the roof. You clean out the sewers so the toilet has some place to flush that shit to. And she shits just the same as you, boy, let me tell you. Women are no different than men in all the ways that really matter. And in the ways that they are different than men, like creating life, that's important. But then there's ways they're different than men in behavior, and that needs to fucking stop. And you need to stop acting like women yourself and throwing tantrums because life is hard and you feel entitled. Life is supposed to be difficult. It is supposed to be challenging to succeed. It is supposed to take you everything you've got to have your own home and raise a family. It's supposed to be annoying to raise children. That is the cost so that you can yield the benefit. And we don't need women legally being allowed to be a prostitute in the literal sense. We definitely don't need women to metaphorically be the prostitutes that they are right now, going out on all these first dates, eating dinner with your ass, and then ghosting you. Why are you taking them out to dinner? Why are you doing that? Why are you taking these hoes out to dinner? Why? What you need to do is take her, meet her at the flea market. Her first date's the flea market. Walk around the flea market with her. If she wants dinner, buy her ass a flea market hot dog. See what she does with that. And if she's got a problem with that and she thinks she deserves better, your work is done for you. You know that you need to just leave her in the dust and just forget that she even exists. There are so many moderate plain to attractive women, like women that are in your league, that I assure you have no other prospects. And they think just because they can rack up a body count with dudes that want to treat them like the, the, the neighborhood moped, that somehow or another, they're going to get in with uh, some Ryan Gosling looking clown. It ain't happening. You are a much better match for them. And on some level, they know it too. So when you stop spoiling them and then treating them like princesses and just be like, look ho, you can be wife material, or you can go buy yourself some more cat food. You just need to be real with these women. Shut it down. You know? The eights and nines and tens amongst us, us guys, you know, the, the better ones, the chads, you know, they got all their stuff together, you know? The Henrys, the, you know, the ironers not rich yet, uh, the R riches. They need to stop digging around in the gutter and, and stop going to the pig pen for a good time and leave the plain and average women for plain and average people like you and me. Because if these women aren't getting the time of day from all these rich boys, maybe they'll calm the fuck down and rein in their bullshit. And maybe they won't. But you guys, you need to stop settling. You need, you need to tell women in no uncertain term, here's how it's going to be. If you want to benefit from my presence in your life, I'm going to benefit from your presence in my life. Which means, I'm done in the kitchen. That's you now. If you want me to pay all your bills, this is what it's going to take. Don't worry about sex. Sex is inevitable. That That is just a built-in part of the equation. It's baked in. It's nothing you need to concern yourself with. You guys are pathetic. Really. You are such coomers that you are willing to just let these women walk all over you and treat you like trash. They won't marry you. They won't have your kids. It's going to leave you in the dust once they get bored with you. Every once in a while, you find somebody that actually likes you, and that's great. Then they'll play the same shit. You know, when it's time to, to, to nut up or shut up and let's make a life together, they, they, they basically friend zone your ass. They cuck you out. And even if they don't get with other men, there you sit, investing time and energy and resources into something that's going nowhere. What, what are you going to do now? I can't answer that question. I don't know what's the best opportunity and the best option for guys in that situation. I know you need to do some serious soul searching and I, I think you need to consider heavily what your options might be because if you got time to spend on any woman, it best be a woman that's willing to take seriously your commitment. It's best, it's best that you spend that energy and time on a woman who's going to acknowledge and recognize what you're bringing to the table. Maybe you don't own a house, okay? Well, a lot of us don't. It's, it's hard times economically and there's only so many houses to go around and it actually does take years of you busting your hump and having a career before it amounts to anything. I don't know. Love is beautiful. I'm in love myself. But sometimes I can't help but ask myself if I should just be working 60 hours a week, taking up a weekend job, and just grinding out, putting back everything I can, and just going and making that house happen. I don't know. I don't know about a lot about a lot. You know, again, I'm madly in love, but it's 
I don't know if it means anything. I, I'm, I wonder a lot. You know, love is important. Love is a huge part of the equation. But love is not what marriage is about. So maybe I'm right not to be marriage material. Like maybe it's right that I, you know, like my partner won't marry me because marriages are not about love. Get that, get that through your head now and understand that as best as you can. Really meditate on that. Marriage is not about love. I don't want to get married because I love someone. I want to get married because I want a structure in place so that I can have a healthy, temperance, or you know, a healthy, uh, even-tempered uh, in- environment for creating a family, for raising a family, for producing the seeds for a legacy, to plant the seeds of a tree under which shade I will never sit. I want to build something that's not going to be finished in my lifetime and know that I'm a part of it as I lay on my deathbed and that it's not going to stop with just me leaving this earth. That takes commitment on levels that most people of today just can't wrap their heads around. You can't fathom it. That's okay. I mean, it's really not okay, but I'm not... You know, you can't get blood from a stone, so if it, if it doesn't fit inside your mind, this this grandiose concept, then you, you're just going to have to do like the Fruit Loops do, do like the Poofters do, and work on relaxing that sphincter so that, that, that this huge thought can eventually fit inside that gaping mind of yours. Like... It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about my partner. It's not about any one person on this earth. While one person can conceivably change the world and has a thousand times, your, your, your goal in life should not be to change the world. Your goal in life should be to see that your place in the world is filled by someone else when you can no longer fill your place in the world. That's what children are for. It, it, it's to give back to an environment that has allowed you to be comfortable and pursue your mindless self-indulgence. And we all do it. Even the fundamentalists amongst us do it. Even the uh, 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 kind of fundamentalist uh, Islamic types do it. Like Even they have their own indulgences in their own way. But they know that they have to give back in some way. And, and how they do things might not be how you or I do things, but at least they're doing their job. I'll tell you, if there's one culture that's out there reproducing at replacement rates and putting children into the world, it's Islam. So props to them. At least they know what their at least they know what their place is in the world is to be fruitful and multiply. That's what I should be doing. That's what everybody should be doing. Do I have the money to have kids? Hell no. But if I had a woman willing to pump some babies into, I I would pump the babies in there and we'd figure it out. You know, I, I would have liked to have been married at like 23, 24 years old, but I was too much of a goofball and I was a loser. That's on me. Is it gonna stay that way forever? I hope not, but it might. Maybe it's delusional to think that I can have a family, but that's exactly what I want. So my message for you today is to do some soul searching and understand that you're going to have your fun, you're gonna get your dopamine, don't worry about that, you're gonna have your vices, relax, calm down, but in exchange for that, you're gonna have to put in a little bit of work. You're gonna have to give a little something of yourself to society, to the world itself. You're gonna have to have some responsibility for the next generation. You're going to have to contribute effort towards great works that will not be complete in your time on this earth. You're going to have to do it. And that's all I want to do. That's all I think about half the time. It's just how much better it would be to have family, little kids running around, uh, you know, to just bust my ass like I did today and just work until I hurt and then work some more and then come home and know that whatever my needs are, they're met. And then I got clean clothes to wear in the morning to go to work again and do it all over again. And if I do that shit six days a week, come home, my needs are met, and I got clean clothes to wear in the morning. That's what most men want. Men don't want a whole lot. We're, we, you think you want a lot, you think you need a lot, but at the end of the day, you will be surprised at how spiritually, mentally, and emotionally fulfilled you are by just having a family that's glad to see you when you come home having your basic needs met. Nothing fancy, just just food. If you're hungry, you can eat. If you're not hungry, you don't have to eat. Uh, You know, uh, you're not doing every fucking thing all the time. And when you you get up in the morning, you got clean clothes to put on, you can go on to work. Just focus on, you know, making the moves, building, building the dream, 
and then you got you got a partner at home that's basically covering for you, running everything, making all those choices that you really shouldn't be taking the time to even worry about. You know, you don't you don't know what it's like to have to just do it all. I mean, single men, you guys, you know, you really have a truncated and abbreviated version of these needs when you're on your own. You know, you you live in an empty apartment, you got a very Spartan configuration, you probably got a mattress on the floor, you got your TV, you got your gaming console or your, your computer, and you're, you're set, you're good to go, and that's that's all you got. So it's not like you have a lot of needs, like your needs is basically to eat, sleep, work, and, 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 and basically be a consumer, like with a double O, like coomer, but consumer. That's, that's, what, that's what you think you need. What you ought to be doing is spending that extra time cooming, working more, so you can be putting back money to have a proper home filled with proper furniture and a proper wardrobe to wear so that people take you seriously instead of stepping out in fucking pajamas and trainers. The nerve of you. You're as bad as these hoes in pajamas wearing a bonnet to a proper restaurant, to a grocery store. The degeneracy is just frustrating to levels that I can barely convey to you. Like, I can't even articulate how disappointing it is to see my generation acting like fucking children. Unkempt, frivolous, pathetic, materialistic, fickle, just like their single-ass mothers. For all the fucking good it did them. Look at where they're at. Old, bitter house reeking of Virginia Slims and cat shit. It's awful. Don't be like them. Men, do you, do not be like your mother. You are a man. What the fuck you crossing your legs for sitting there? Come on. Seriously. Seriously. That's all you can do to just work hard, be presentable, That'd be something, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? It's all yours. Everything inside your apartment, your your empty apartment, that's all yours. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. You can bring girl back there. Shake out an old empty cup of noodle cup in your garbage can. Pour a drink into that. You ain't got nothing. You're wasting all this money taking them out to dinner because you ain't got no place to bring them home to. Shouldn't even be doing that anyway. Shouldn't be getting no motel room for these sluts. Should be doing none of it. Work your ass 60 hours a week. Get some clothes to wear. Get some clothes to wear. Figure out how to use slacks. Some decent shoes. Figure out how a button-up shirt is. Find out what a windsor knot is, huh? Wear a tie. Get a wristwatch. Not one of these goofy-ass contraptions either. And you know what? If you're doing all that... You got some money because you ain't dicking around all the time, getting it wet at the cost of a five-star meal. Maybe you could just pay a matchmaker service to find you a woman that went to home ec. Hmm? It's just a thought. You come over here and ask me who the hell am I to tell you all this. I'm the guy who didn't take that advice. And look at where I am. I'm 39 years old. I'm dirty as shit. I live in a goddamn hoarder house. I drink too much. I do have a girlfriend that I love, and that's that's pretty beyond what I probably deserve, but I don't have a wife. I have a kid that I can't be in his life. I'm not allowed to. I only have the one. I don't have multiple kids. I don't go on vacations out of the country. I don't travel. You know, I got a fist-sized hole in my bumper cover, and I can't do anything about that. I didn't take the advice I'm giving you. And look at me. I got shit teeth. All right? You can do better. If you're watching this shit in your 20s, you'd better do better. Because I got started getting my shit together at 32 years old. Now I'm 39. I'm not very far along. It's going to take you some time. It's going to take about 15, 20 years before you have anything to show for it. So you better take your ass on. Get a proper job. You better hang on to it with a death grip. And you better outwork your coworkers. And you better be hungry for promotions. And you better be effectively blowing your boss whatever it takes you better be after it you really better because it can always be worse you can be me bitter 
angry, borderline alcoholic, on the verge of intolerable, socially awkward, a joke in your peer circles, hanging out with a bunch of people that are married and have five fucking kids and here you are, you brought an extra 12 pack, having emotional issues with your girlfriend because you don't want to go out anymore because all you fucking do is work and fucking she can't understand how fucking broke you really are. Don't be me. God help you, do not be me. I'm warning your ass. You better listen. Happy New Year, I guess.